I, I lean heavily into Instagram for self-marketing and mm -hmm. a lot of that growth happened organically in, in the very beginning. And it was also, it was in 2020, it was, we were all locked in our homes, oh, yeah. glued to our phones. And that was like our only social interaction. Right. Yeah. So I, I just dove in head first and was like, I'm going to participate in every single challenge that I can. I am so excited to be here today with Jess Miller. Jess Miller is an illustrator who began her career as a graphic designer working in toy packaging. And in 2020, she shifted to illustration and lettering art and launched her own business. So her art is super charming. I'm really excited to get a chance to learn more and chat with her. So thanks for joining us, Jess. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me, Elizabeth. Of course. I said us like the royal, like us, who's us? It's just me. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> so uh, to start, can you give an overview of your design background and where you are now? Sure. Yeah. Um, I, my background is in graphic design and I went to school for art. Um, I'm from Los Angeles, but I went to the East coast for school. I graduated with a BFA from Boston university oh, nice. and yeah, we learned a lot of fine art. Like it was very like traditional in its core. So we learned drawing and painting and sculpture before even touching a computer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so looking back, I was like, that was actually like super important like foundational skills that actually did help me even in like the digital world and just in the art world in general and um yeah and I graduated in 2008 in like the height of the economic recession yeah so it was it was hard getting any kind of job like let alone like a job like in your field as an artist so that was a challenge but one of my first jobs was an internship at Disney Consumer Products. Mm. And um, so I learned kind of like the licensing world at a very, very young in my career. Um, and and also like working with like licensed characters. So we, um, you know, they have, Disney has like style guides and so yes. was, like, the layout work. And so I would put in on, and I worked in their health and beauty department at the time. So it was, um, packaging for like Oral-B toothbrushes and toothpaste and Kleenex boxes and even diapers and like anything that you can right. think of that's like health and beauty products. Yeah. Um, but, but it was fun and I learned a lot and I had really good um, supervisors and managers that kind of like showed me the ropes and like took me in and it was, it was really, really good experience. But um, it was also like really hard to get a full-time job. I was a serial contract designer for mm. many, yeah. many years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just like, I couldn't, and you know, maybe it's, I don't know if it, like other designers have this problem, but um, in the state of California, they just don't want to hire you on full-time and give you those mm. benefits. And like, it's just too costly. So for them, it's it's much, you know, better financially to just hire you as a contractor and then let you go. Like, I guess in the state of California, you it's usually like six month contract to a year and then they have to either hire one full time or let you go. And so oh. they never hire on full time. So they um, just let you go. <laughs> so oh, man. Yeah, that's I constantly tough. went like went through that phase. I did, I did at one point in my, in my career work, um, five years at a, a small mom and pop toy shop. And that was full time. That was with educational insights. And that was great. I wore a ton of hats. Like I got a ton of experience. I was mm. an art director. I art directed illustrators and photographers, industrial designers. So I, I learned a lot, but I also got really burned out. Like it was just like too much. <laughs> And it was too much for for someone that was technically only supposed to be a package designer. It was mm. it was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah, a lot. I had a job like that. That was like every you know, not everything. I mean, I was still the textile designer, but it, it was yeah. like it was such a small company that yeah, you get a lot of. I mean, it was great for experience looking back, but yeah, I definitely was like, why am I why am I doing? Yeah, that? well, like, when I was <laughs> young, I started. I think when I was like in my twenties, and I loved it. I was just like, oh, give me more. I want more experience. Like I was thirsty for it. And then as I got older, I got jaded, and I'm like, wait, you're just using me. You're like, like this is just like, you know, I'm like getting so burned out. I'm like working these long hours and like oh, getting man. little in return, but. 
anyway, that's, that's another story, but, um, but yeah, it was a lot of design. And then in 20, so then uh, in 2020, I, um, actually let's go back 2019. I had a contract job with Hasbro. So once, once you kind of fall into this, like, um, working for Disney and like consumer products, products. you kind of, you're, you're in this cycle. Like you're just, you can never leave that bubble. Mm -hmm. So I talked to a lot of other designers that did toy packaging and they, they just move around from toy company to toy company. Is it right. you, call you have that skill set. I mean, that's the whole thing about a niche, right? It's like, you right. have that and skill you, set, you know, the language. And you, you get hired for the kind of stuff that's in your portfolio. And at the time, my portfolio was full of toy package design and consumer right. product packaging. So that's not like, you know, some fashion designer brand was going to hire me. Like, you know, it would be completely like different stuff that I do. So, um, so I was working another contract for Hasbro. I think this was like my second, second contract with them and I was pregnant. So I had my daughter in September of 2019 and, um, you know, I told them, I'm like, I just want to take six months off and then I'll like sign on for another contract. And then they're like, that's great. Like take as much time as you need. You know, when you come back, we'll hopefully hire you on full time. And they were always dangling that carrot. Like mm. next time we swear we'll hire you on. I'm like, okay. So, um, so then six months, you know, roll around, it's March, 2020 and I'm, I'm ready to go back to work. Like I, I love my daughter. I love spending time with her, but I'm also just passionate about like working and creating art and just like, yeah, totally. I'm Same. just, I, I just love it. And, and I, so all credit to those, to, to moms who work at home or work, work or just with the big kids, um, yeah. you know, cause it is harder probably, but I was like, Oh, I remember before I had kids, I was like, used to joke and argue with my husband of like, who's going to be the stay at home parent. And then we had kids and I was like, no, not me. And I, I don't right. want to, never mind. <laughs> I mean, I love yeah, my kids too, but ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, no. I, I, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I love her and I love spending quality time with her. But I, I'm also just passionate about what I do and I'm passionate about my work. Yeah. And I was totally ready to go back. And um, I was set to start my contract job the week of the pandemic shutdown. So I got a phone call, and they're like, "As you already are aware of, you've heard on the news, we're going through this like." global pandemic and where they actually let go of all their contract designers and they were like really like short staffed and everyone was working from home and they were very much like you know everything's up in the air we don't know if it's going to be two weeks we don't know if it's going right, to be yeah months. exactly back then we had no like, idea Ugh. so they, they they really didn't give me any kind of answer other than that it's on hold for now right so I, of course I was devastated like I was like you know, what do I do now? Like, I was ready to go back to work. Like, what kind of purpose do I have? Like, I was just, I just felt useless. And, and so I was like in this really like dark place. I'm just like, I just don't know what to do with my life. So my sister gave me her old iPad like years ago. And she's like, I think you'd really like digital illustration. Like, just have some fun with it. And so I finally was like, well, I have free time. Like, that time, yep. <laughs> something to do. Everybody took out their art projects from the back of their closet at that time. Right, sure. right. So that's what I did. I, I, I mean, it was just for fun and I was really bad at it. And I was like, where can I just like take some crash courses? And so I looked, I turned to Skillshare and I was like, um, you know, I just kind of browsed around. I'm like, I just some easy classes I can take and procreate and just kind of learn how to use the program. And I took a bunch of hand lettering and illustration classes. And I really loved combining the two because it was kind of like package design, but it mm -hmm. was flat. It was those combining some kind of like lettering typography yeah. with, with like a, a cute um, package. I drew like a lot of bottles and labels. Like I just have this on my desk, but like stuff like this. It was just like a bottle with like a cute pun in it. And I'm like, I just... I, and it probably was because of my um, package design background that yeah. made, made me gravitate towards that. And so I, and I just wanted to share my Skillshare projects. I was just like, so proud of them. So I was just like, look at this greeting card I made, or look at this like pattern that I made. And, and um, I just had a blast, like tagging the instructor and just like sharing my art. And um, I was kind of addicted. So every time my daughter went down for a nap, I was, cre I'd create something. I'd be like, even if it was like just for 30 minutes, I'm like, I'm just going to draw for 30 minutes. And um, 
It was also a time of a lot of art challenges. They were, I think it was yeah. the summertime. So they were doing some kind of like draw this in your style, like portrait challenge. And then um, Inktober came up. So there was a lot of like Halloween challenges. And then I was like, okay, I'm, I'm really going to like pick a theme and this like limited color palette and do this series of like kind of spooky illustrations. And so I did that. And then it wasn't until February of 2021 that American Greetings reached out and they were like, we found your art, your Halloween art on Instagram. Oh, wow. Would you like to turn it into a greeting card, like a Halloween greeting card? And I was like, first of all, I thought it was fake. I was like, yeah, fair this enough, fair real? enough. Yeah, I was like, what is this? And then I Googled them and I was like, okay, okay, this is real. And then, um, and then I was like, do they know that I'm like, I'm not really like an illustrator. I'm, I'm just doing this for fun. I'm like, do they know that? I'm like, okay, I'm just going to fake it. I'm just going to pretend that like I am an illustrator. Yeah, you so are. Course, You're illustrating. <laughs> so I'm like, of course, of course. So I did it. And now I have this like long, like standing relationship with them. I do tons of greeting cards for them. And it's like, it's been like a really great fit, but it was just um, consistently like putting my art out there and just, um, participating in those challenges and just like actively just putting my art out every day and it wasn't even with the intention that I was going to get hired it just kind of happened but mm. then once once one job came it was like okay I could do this and it just gave me that confidence mm. that I was like yeah I'm an illustrator and I could I could turn this into my career do a thing oh okay so that is I mean there's a lot there awesome <laughs> So I guess let's start to unpack it because that's, that's really, I mean, you gave some, some details as you came along, but I mean, I think some of like, what are some of the key lessons you feel like you took away from your career? Cause you were saying how you, you know, because you've uh, well, I mean, this is your career now, but you know what I mean? From yeah. your, your, your contract work that have helped you as you've started to build this new direction in your career um because you were saying that you know the text mixed with the illustrations and stuff yeah, is sort of yeah. one thing that you lean towards but was there do you feel like there was other lessons that you got from some of your work um as a contractor as a packaging designer that really you notice being pulled into your current situation absolutely no absolutely because like people people say that like wow like you like this was really fast for you and your career as an illustrator like really took off and I'm like yes but my I think my background in design and art direction really gave me that support mm. and re really did like help me segue into illustration so I mean as an art director like I was used to hiring illustrators and having them do the graphics for the board game or whatever it is the book I was working on mm. so it was kind of like the roles were reversed so yeah <laughs> definitely I'm like okay yeah so I, I kind of had an idea of how I'm like okay I can pitch this is how I can pitch myself to an art director like I kind of know what they're looking for and like and I, I was a little savvy also of just like mass market appeal. So I, you know, this is going to sell on a board game. This probably wouldn't sell on a board game, you know, like that kind of thing. Like, um, yes, that's so yeah, important, that was, right? Because that's the thing. I mean, you know, what we do is for product, it's for the mass market. And I'm always like hammering this point home of like, it's, it's no disrespect to someone who's like a fine artist or anything yeah, like yeah. that, but I mean, what I talk about when I talk about art for product is so much more commercial than, you know, some someone who does do these like really beautiful paintings or whatever that are abstract or something. It's like, not that that can't be on a product. Of course it can be, but like thinking about like what we buy on notebooks and whatever gift bags and cards is, it does tend to be different than that fine Absolutely. art stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and I was coming from like an art and design world. And so it wasn't like I was just an accountant or something like completely right, like, right. <laughs> there was no, like, obviously like actual <laughs> skit, like technical skills and stuff like that. I'm sure you probably, yeah, already, and so, I mean, even though I mean, you had to learn procreate, you, you understand, you know, layout and all the other things, you know, color. Right. Right. Like so, I mean, like I did teach myself procreate, but I was very well versed in Photoshop and illustrator to begin with. So it's like yeah. those programs were like industry standard and they don't scare me but um and that also gave me a leg up to knowing those programs because for American Greetings for example like I will illustrate the card for them 
but I will actually do some of like the layout and uh, file prep. So I will like, especially if it's like, um, like any kind of like special finish, like a gold mm, yeah, embellishment like that. And stuff, yeah. that part has to be in vector and I have to like prepare the file for them. Yeah. And I didn't realize that like a lot of artists I talk to, they, they don't know how to do that. They don't know anything about Photoshop or they don't know how to like vectorize their art. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Like that, that definitely like gives me a leg up. So I do like, I get this question asked like all the time when artists say like, do you prefer like Procreate or Illustrator? And it's like, I don't really prefer either program because mm -hmm. I use them both in tandem Yeah. and I use, and it really depends on the client's wants and needs. Like I, you know, if the client needs to scale it to some huge size, I'm going to make it in vector. Of course, <laughs> if it's, right. You know, if they want something more illustrative and full of texture, then I'm probably going to lean in more to procreate. So it just depends. Yeah. on what the Yeah, is. totally agree. Totally agree. It really just depends on what your, your end product is. Me personally, like, I think I've been getting more into, yeah, the, well, I was procreate like, and now I'm trying to get into fresco more because that's like the easier connection you know but yeah, you know yeah. you have your favorite brushes in procreate and so i mean there's a million brushes in fresco too but i just have to get used to them and know which ones i like but anyways as illustrator has always has long been my favorite but like you know it is nice to be able to yeah just sit and draw something on an ipad away from your desk and be and like add that texture and those fun accents and things like that so I have I yeah I agree that it's sort of like whatever you need like we can do it let's let's make yeah. it work yeah absolutely I love that um so okay so you sort of you talked about the transition well how you kind of ended up uh you know because of the pandemic and the contract work, how you ended up with a uh, iPad, iPad doing work, getting into the art. Um, so it would you say then, you know, it wasn't really a, I'm trying to think how to put this. Were you, tr you weren't really actively looking to switch careers. You were just sort of on hold because of the pandemic and because of not knowing what was happening and you were doing your thing that you were really enjoying. And then as you got your first job that then it was like, oh wait, actually this could be a career. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, how it went. Um, yeah. So in 2021, that, that kind of was when like the light bulb went off and I was like, yeah, this could be this could be a career. And, um, and then in 2021, I think it was April Hasbro did get back to me and they were like, okay, now we're going to like hire on some contractors. I was working from home, but for them full time. And then I was moonlighting on the side. So I was doing all of my like freelance stuff at night. And so it was kind of like a lot to juggle because my daughter, even though she was in preschool, she was sick all the time. And then I was doing this full-time design work for Hasbro. And then I was doing, you know, this illustration at night. And so I was like, I was juggling a lot and it was, it was getting too much and then but I was like I didn't want to quit my full-time job because that was like some steady income so it was like it was a lot of like push and pull that I was feeling and then um in October um Hasbro lost the Disney princess license and so they they basically laid off the Disney princess team and they you know they broke they dispersed them into other parts of the company but since I was a contractor they just let me go. So that was very contract cool. work. <laughs> but at that time it was like, oh Did thank I... God. Like they let me go. I, I they spared me this awkward conversation of like gotcha. leaving. So I so was that like, was ready. like the sort of like, all right, now we're gonna shift gears. Yeah, they gave like, me intention. they gave me permission. I was like, oh okay, now I can like pursue what I really want to do is illustration. And so then I was gaining more traction and getting more clients and I was more comfortable and um but I'm not going to lie. There was months where it was like feast or famine because I was only relying on freelance work. That was it. And as any freelancer knows, it's a roller coaster, right? Like you go through seasons where you have a ton of work and then other times where it's scarce and it's, it's like you don't yeah. know when your next job's coming from. And um, but I also started working with a business coach. Um, his name's Logan Elliott. And he just popped into my DMs and was like, hey, like, have you ever thought about like working with a coach? And like my immediate response was like, no. And so I was just like, 
not for me kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he was like, no, let's have a conversation. So we talked about it. We talked about it a few times. And then I talked to other artists that used him and I was like, okay, okay. I'm like, I'll do your program for three months and I'll try it out. And, um, and it really changed everything. And I, and I mm. think also it was letting go of all those limiting mindsets, like trying to poke holes in it and trying to find like, I was like, what happens if I just flip the script? I lean all into it and say like, maybe he's going to help keep me accountable. He's going to like help me write my goals and like really turn this into like a, a creative business and not necessarily just freelancing. And it did, it really, it really helped a lot. And I think it was getting over a lot of those mindset <laughs> the issues yes 100%. and it was um he really helped me diversify my income streams too so I wasn't solely relying just on client work it was art licensing and it was um brand partnerships and a little bit of education with Skillshare so it was really um diversifying so when I do have those lean months I could just lean back into you know other like scalable income so it's like royalties right. from licensing and Skillshare I love that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think that's a really important mindset shift uh, that you were talking about of from freelance to creative business, right? Yeah. I have had the same shift and I, that's, I'm like, it's funny because right now I'm, I, I have a course called start your service pattern business and I made it in 2020 also launched it that, that fateful week of March, <laughs> of March 13th or whatever around then. That same week that you were you were not getting the job you thought you were getting, I was launching my big course, um, but I'm reworking it uh, and and doing like a full redo for for this uh, spring. And one thing that I'm talking about at the beginning to like get people like prepped in the in the introduction part is basically like, hey, if you think you're just like a freelancer or you're just, it's just like a hobby or it's just this, just this, you know, like you're wrong. <laughs> Cause I really thought I was just going to be a freelancer. Like I was like, I worked in-house as a textile designer for many years. And so when I, when I wanted to leave New York city, I was like, okay, I'm going to go freelance and I'm just going to be independent. I'm going to, instead of having one client, AKA my job, I'm going to have like three or four clients and it won't be that much of a transition. It's just, I got to find, obviously got to find those clients, but like, whatever, no big deal. Now that is a whole other story. It, it's not as easy as it sounds, <laughs> Yep, yep. but the point is I, I, for a very long time was like, I'm a freelancer. I'm a freelancer. You know, even as I started to get into art licensing and do other things, it's still like, I'm a freelancer. And it's like, well, no, because even if you, even if I didn't have other like uh, other income streams, even if the only way that I earned money was from freelancing, saying that you're a freelancer is somehow reductive. And like people, I feel like people see it as like, it's contract work or it's what like, it, there's this, there's this stigma that kind of goes along with it of like temporary right. or not stable. And I think or that's, and it stemmed from all that contract work I did for Hasbro and it, I was very disposable. It was very mm -hmm. much like limited time. You know, it was like, we're only going to have you for a year and then let you go. Mm -hmm. And it was just, I was done feeling disposable. I was like, you know, I'm like, and so now like when people say like, oh, you're, you're just a freelancer. I'm like, no, actually I am a creative business owner because I do so much more. And then I explained like my income streams to them. And then yeah. they're like, oh, I had no idea. And it was, you know, and so it's like, you do you have to like some educate people. Gravitas to the situation yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I think even I think if you, I mean, so and pride and ownership and like, and you're running your own business, you know, instead of just being like, oh, I'm a freelancer and I do some projects for this company, you know, it's like, no, like you, you take pride. This is your artwork. This is so I, I encourage people to Same. not label themselves as freelancers. It's Same. like, you're so much yeah. more than that. You know? yeah. <laughs> even if it's your only, even if it's your only income stream, you are more right, than that. Right. You're doing all the things, right? You're yes. doing the admin of, you know, you're finding the clients, you're doing the marketing, you're doing the artwork, you're doing all the things, you're wearing all the hats, most likely. Right. And so, yeah, it's like you are running a company, you are doing yeah, all the things, yeah. you're not just... It's one thing if you worked at like an agency where you're just being handed everything and even still, I mean, whatever, but 
Yeah, no, you're running a business. So if you're trying to make money with your art, you're running a business, like basically get used to it. So <laughs> I, I love that point that, and that mindset shift that you were able to have by, yeah, by working yeah. and seeing all those different things. That's awesome. Yeah. And it was also too, like, I, I kind of saw like other artists that were successful at like running their own business. And so I was like, I want to figure out what they're doing. I want to get on their radar. I want to be friends with them, make connections. I was taking every kind of course you could, any kind of like, I didn't know anything really about, I mean, I did know some stuff about licensing, but not much about how to license my own artwork. And so I took a bunch of courses and I was, I was just wanting to like immerse myself in it. And I think a lot of artists too, they think they're like, no, I already know how to do that. I'm not going to waste my money on this course. I'm not going to like, I don't need help, but it was, actually like seeking out that that help and that that knowledge that that really did help grow my business yeah the community aspect of it as well of, of most courses right is yeah, is getting to meet other really. people in the same stage that's another thing that I is so has been so important in my journey as well is like the is is fostering community and like I've been talking about this lately it's like don't you know you don't go into uh any sort of relationship with another artist or, you know, anything with, well, hopefully you're not going into it with any, in any sort of calculating way. However, it often pays off. So what, like how many, you know, yeah. artist friends do you have who might recommend you for a job? Like I've gotten so many jobs. Yeah, yeah likewise. Friends. And then I'm able to do it too. Like if my place exactly, is yes, cool, I I'm like, this artist would be awesome for this project or like all the time I get asked to like illustrate children's book art. And I'm like, I don't, I don't do that. That's not my life. Yeah. But I'm like, I know other artists that are very passionate about that. And so I'll like give their, give their pass along their names. So yeah, it's just this way to like um, help each other out and like empower each other. And I'm all about that, like community and, and also like no gatekeeping either. Like when I was starting out, I had so many questions about like, just like the licensing and how to do things and like contract negotiations and everyone was so tight-lipped about it and I'm like how are we gonna like help each other grow like if we're not like mm. sharing information and, and that kind of thing and so um so I do strongly believe in just like I mean if someone dms me and they have a question I will try my best to like answer it and like and just and just help them out like I just want other artists to have that kind of same success yeah definitely that's I mean that's what I aim to do with my YouTube at this point if people DM me I'm like I think I have a video on that somewhere I'm like I don't have time to like spell it all out for you but definitely there's a link in here I know, I know I do get like inundated sometimes and I can't answer them all but yeah, I really right. do try to like respond yes, a lot do. yeah I mean we're still working you know obviously yeah, yeah. All all the things, but all right so you told me about how you uh, American Greetings reached out to you because you had been sharing so much, been sharing your work. Your story is atypical in that it is, it is really, I'm, you said that people have told you this and I'm sure you know, you are, you, you do seem to have made connections and, and found client work um, relatively quickly. Um, and I know some people are probably watching, will be watching this and being like, look, I have been actively trying to find clients for however many years. And yeah. this girl's out here, like, I just did my drawing and, <laughs> and the biggest, you know, card company reached out to me and I didn't even know I was an illustrator. Now, I, <laughs> no shame really on that. I'm not, I'm not, you know, like there is obviously, you know, <laughs> there was talent behind your work for sure, yeah. but clearly yeah. your story isn't most people's story. Um, so beyond that, let's beyond the the one that you have told us about where they reached out specifically, what has what helped you make some initial connections with paying work? Like what other like other freelance clients or licensing, however, what other other areas that you explored, like what helped you make some of those connections, do you think? Yeah, you know, it was um it was I, I lean heavily into Instagram for self-marketing and a lot of that growth happened organically in, in the very beginning. And it was also, 
it was in 2020. It was, we were all locked in our homes, oh, yeah. glued to our phones. And that was like our only social interaction. Right. Yeah. So I, I just dove in head first and was like, I'm going to participate in every single challenge that I can. And then when those were over, I was, I was sad and I'm like, well, why don't I host my own? And so I started hosting my own challenges and I just, I talked to also, uh, I had a couple interviews with art agents and there was interest in my work, but they're like, you just don't have like the volume of your art isn't there. So I started making just a ton of art. I'm like, I'm going to make just collections. I'm going to make, and then I also started to um, try to maximize my art as much as I could. So I would let's say I did a flat illustration and then I would maybe coordinate like a hand lettering piece. I'd take some of those icons and add some lettering. And then I would take those icons and make it a repeating pattern. And then I would use some of those same elements and add a character portrait. So I had this like mini collection going on. And I think that that stemmed um, from my toy package experience. Like we worked in style guides. And so right, exactly. I, you know, um, I knew what like a hero pattern was and a coordinating. So I, I had some knowledge of that. And then, um, you know, how to create like a badge and like, you know, badges are just like basically like art that you could put on a pillow or whatever, like you can redistribute. Right, yeah. There, yeah. So I, <laughs> I had some knowledge of that. I also, um, I was just aware of trends too. Like I would go trend shopping and I would actively pursue these companies. I would um, flip over their products, research the company. If they heard an artist name, I would be looking up that artist and seeing who else they partnered with. And I was like, right, yeah. And then I would, I was also looking at like, where would my art fit? It's like, would it align? Would it fit with this company that is working with artists? You know, I was very like attuned to like, where in the world will my art fit? And now when I create art, I, I do think of the product in mind. I'm like, is yeah. this pattern going to go best on fabric or is it going to yeah. maybe live more in a digital world? Like, I don't know. So I'm, I'm always thinking kind of, of, of the end product of where, of where it will be. I definitely and recommend I, And I manifested that a lot with product mock-ups. So, I mean, in my, in my early like illustration career, so it was like 2021, I sat down with um, like a former art agent just for like a portfolio pep talk. And my portfolio was like half and half. It was some illustration work. And then it was a lot of toy packaging. And she, she was honest and upfront with me. And she's like, this is kind of confusing. It's like, are you a designer and doing this kind of work? Or are you, are you an illustrator? She's like, what do you want to do? And I'm like, I want to draw. I just want to create art. And she's like, you need to take down all that Disney packaging yeah. and just put up illustration work. And then I was like, but I don't have many clients. Like I worked with American Greetings, but the card isn't going to be on shelf for like a year. Right. So like, yeah. What am I going to do until then? And she was like, she was like, do passion projects. She's like, use mock-ups. She's like, take a Starbucks logo and like put it on some like coffee packaging and say that, you know, this is some exploratory design that you did for, you know, a fictional thing for Starbucks. And so, and I did, and it's, and it's still on my portfolio today. And it's, it's led to like a lot of client projects because, because it was, it, it was a, something I wanted to manifest. It was like, this is something I'm, I'm totally capable of doing. I haven't been hired for it yet, but this is what, like, this is where my art could live. I love that. All right. Yeah. Um, I think that makes, yeah, definitely thinking of that end product is such an important part and thinking, you know, as we talked about sort of the co ideas of co the commercial art and, and thinking of end products and being strategic about trends. I mean, all of these are such important points that you're bringing up and that, you know, I think people really do need to think about when, you know, we, a lot of artists start with, you know, this excitement over learning, you know, how to illustrate, whether it's, you know, learning Procreate or learning some sort of program or the idea of if it's surface pattern design, like actually like how to put something in repeat. And, you know, they're in the, they're in their technical brains and maybe they're in there like, oh, I get to draw brains. And you started there too with your, with, with the iPad, it sounds like of like, I get to, the, I'm learning this and I get to do the thing, but then it's important to make that like turn, which you clearly did of like, all right, now let's start being strategic about things. Now, like we had our fun, we learned the skills. Now let's apply the skills and what do we need to do? So I love that. I love hearing that kind of 
uh, storyline, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think too, like I've, I've just built up a lot of resilience because I think it was, it was from doing all that contract work and just being let go so many times. It was like, well, I got to find my next job. I got to find my next like stream of income. Like I got to figure this out. So it was a lot because I talked to like a lot of artists that are are scared to leave their full time job. It's like they make art on the side and then they're just like, I don't think I I don't have that safety net. And it was like I never had that net to begin with. So I was just like, well, I got to I got to figure this out and I just got it. I got to make it happen. And I'm also not not a perfectionist like I'm I I come from this the thought of finished is beautiful like that is what they like I'm is better than perfect is a mantra over here (laughs) yeah like I and and that was really from from working at an ad agency I was a contractor at like design agencies and it was just like you need to do the work you need to do it now and you need to get it out the door and Mm. it was like finished is beautiful like we can't overthink this so Mm. I think I translated that into my business Cause it's like, um, like I make a lot of work and if you look at it, there's imperfections. There's might be, I mean, occasionally a typo, but I'm just like, you know, <laughs> there's, and you know, maybe if I spent like five more hours on it, it could have been, you know, a little bit better, but it's like, is it really going to sell? No, it's not. You I'm know, with you girl. Done is better than perfect. Is probably not. My... <laughs> you don't have to convince me. <laughs> Um, I love that. So that's actually, I mean, totally, I've had the same, uh, not the same experiences, but, you know, similar, um, having come from in-house staff design. I mean, yes, I was doing, I I did have a full-time job, so I I wasn't like, kind of like always looking for work, but I, I did get used to basically like you know, you just go with the flow. Like, don't, I don't, I didn't ever take my art personally. It's like, if, if yeah. art director wants something different, then fine, cool. Like, whatever you say, it's fine. Yeah. Like, you know, I think some people, you know, clench their, you know, they spent a long time on it or whatever the reason, and they, they love it so deeply. And not that you can't have a couple of those in your portfolio, your true loves, if you really want to, but like the idea again is to make money with it and to, to move forward. So if an art director needs something different or again, the rejection, like I don't have the fear of, of pitching my stuff because if someone says no, then okay, cool. Like, right. you know, it's and not I like, think, yeah, they don't I like, did experience like oh, no. some, some rejection too. Like I, um, I interviewed with this really well-known art agency and they, they licensed a ton of artists and they were interested in my art and it sounded like they were going to sign me on. And then, um, you know, two weeks went by and I'm like, oh, I haven't heard back from them. This doesn't sound good. And then I got an email saying that like, oh, they decided to pass on my, on my art and that, um, I don't know, like their sales rep or whatever thought it wasn't appropriate. I'm like, okay. So (laughs) instead of being like upset about it, I went on their website and I searched all the different brands that they partnered with and all the artists that they worked with. And I just went and I... I looked up names. I did my own detective work. I'm like, I'm going to go on LinkedIn. I'm going to pitch myself to this company that they work with. And, and it worked. I worked with case I worked with a ton of different brands that that they also partner with, with their artists. Mm. And it was, it was kind of like, I threw it back in their face. It was like, well, if you're not going to hire me on and bring me on and represent me, I'm going to represent myself. And I'm going to show you like how I can do it. And so it was 100%. I love that. Yeah. I mean, yes, exactly. Like it's uh, an agent is, isn't a, you know, magic ticket anyways. No, and you know, I have an agent and and it's not, yeah, it's not a magic solution. I can't tell you how many artists I talked to where they're like, if I only had an agent and I was like, no, actually like you can do this yourself and I'm going to tell you how. And I'm like, I did it myself. And like, you should really be an advocate for yourself first Mm -hmm. and then kind of figure out the ropes and everything and then maybe down the line if you if you really feel like you need like an agent but you can totally do this on your own you don't you don't need an agent (laughs) totally um so let's talk a little bit about I'm I'm like I have to look at the time because I have some more questions and there's so much I want (laughs) to dive into but I can't we can't go on forever all right let's see um Let's talk about uh, 
you're very prolific. <laughs> you do a lot of, at least from, from my perspective, I mean, of course, everyone, social media, whatever, who knows what, but you, well, you kind of have to be because you're posting a lot of social, uh, a lot of, yeah. a lot of artwork, a lot of new art. You do all these challenges. You have, you create art for all these challenges. Every time I see challenges, I'm like, yeah. And then I'm like, nah, I got other stuff. To do. <laughs> so um, I don't really have a question around this, but I guess, you know, I'm curious about how, you know, how you balance the excitement that you have for this field and that you love to draw and you just want to draw, as you've said, and then, you know, the idea of like making so much work, do you get, get to a point where you're like, oh my God, like, cause for me, it's like, I mean, you know, I have different, I go through phases of, but like, sometimes it's just like, dude, if I have to draw the same, like the same, the themes, you know, a lot of the themes come up over and over again for different clients and for my licensing. And it's like, oh, I'm tired of gingerbread houses. So yeah. <laughs> how do you, how do you um, kind of manage or how, you know, what's your thought process on, on creating so much work? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and a lot of a lot of people say like you do create so much art, like how do you do it? And it's like I do revisit a lot of my old pieces. I'm like, how can I breathe like new life into right. this or like update this old style I was doing like two years ago? So it is it is a lot of that. So it's not always like um starting from scratch. And um what else? Yeah. And I think burnout is a very, it's, it's a real thing, right? Like it's, um, I experience it from time to time. Like I, I hit the worst burnout October of last year and I just spread myself too thin. I agreed to too much. And it was mm -hmm. like, it was during Adobe Max and I was a speaker. And then I was also, um, creating content for them behind the scenes. And then I was also like participating in a Halloween challenge and it was like, it was too much. And um, I just lost the desire to kind of create art. And so I took a break. I took I took like a solid like three weeks off. I just didn't post anything. I didn't share anything. And I took a family vacation to Kauai and it was like the best mm. thing ever. It was like- Yeah, it sounds you know, wonderful. Like, that's, I mean, burnout is basically like your, um, your body's way of saying like, you need a break. Like you need, and so this year I've been very conscious of balancing balancing self-care and and I mean as cheesy as it sounds like self-care is not selfish like just from like my own like mm -hmm. I'm a worker bee and I'm just like okay I got a generator like I gotta make all this art and I'm like if I don't if I'm not doing that then I'm being lazy like that was just like my own like right, yeah you and I'm like it's that. not like it's so, like rest is so important mm -hmm. and so I've just really I've just this year especially just taken time to kind of sit back and uh, say no to things that are like maybe just like busy work or like something that's just going to stress me out and overwhelm me and it's like is that really gonna like push the needle you know that much more or am I just saying yes to be like a people pleaser so I've actually um, I said no to a lot of things and I'm just more strategic I guess in the um, the partnerships and like the brands I work with and um, and I think that that I mean, that doesn't come overnight, you know, because like when my first year of illustrating, it was like every single job was like a way to make money. So I said yes to everything. Yeah. And it, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say no to that. <laughs> and so um, it wasn't until like I really like diversified my income streams and like I was comfortable in a place where I could I could say no. And then I could really um, take those days off where I was like, I'm going to just take a day off, get a massage and take a vacation and just relax and like and just have that um, work-life balance too. So it's like when there is, there comes a point in the day when I turn off my computer and my iPad and I have dinner with my family and I, and I play with my daughter, you know? So it's, um, I know it always looks like I'm like creating art and everything, but it, I feel like it's, it's just so important to, to step back and, um, and take those breaks because <laughs> it's like, yeah, your, no, your mind's way of saying like, you're burnt out for a reason. Like you need to like, take a break <laughs> for sure for sure yeah no I, I relate to all of that for um I and I, I do think it's the same I you know I was definitely the same of like saying yes to everything at first and now I say no so there is some amount of like privilege and experience 
to being able to like put up some of those boundaries we don't all not everyone has the ability to to shut things off because maybe totally. for income yeah. reasons for variety of reasons absolutely so yeah. i mean I, I know that i'm lucky to be able to be like no actually i'm not gonna do that project or or whatever it is but i mean you know as best you can setting up those boundaries and yeah and yeah doing what you can is is important uh, you hit on something that I was, that I definitely want to ask you about, um, and that is partnerships. So you shared on your Instagram before that, uh, you know, partnerships figure really heavily into your uh, income streams. Um, I feel like something like last year, was it like something like 50% or it was, I it can't was remember. like high for, I think it was like 45 or 43. Yeah. Something. So but yeah, almost half. <laughs> yeah. So that's something that I'm really, really curious about because I want to know what does that really like, what does brand partnerships really mean as for you as a creator? Is it sponsored posts? Is it like, what exactly does it mean? And, and kind of how did you get into that? Yeah. So, um, so to answer your first question, I bucket any kind of like affiliate link. So if I affiliate for, um, someone's course or oh, okay. their program or whatever, um, I will, I will bucket that into partnerships. partnerships. Okay. Good um, a lot of like social media content. So any kind of, I partner with a brand and maybe it's like a tutorial reel and like, it's, it's basically like an ad for them. And it's, um, I'm using like my platform, my audience to, to sponsor like their product and, um, and user generated content. So maybe they like work I do for Michael's, for example, like they just want an artist like making the craft and then they, they will take that video and post it on their platform. Gotcha. So it's a lot of, um, social media content and how I got there, um, so I really, I'm into personality tests and um, I'm a big, big supporter of the Clifton Strength Finders test. Mm, I've taken that I too, yeah. that test in- All right, talk to me about world. your strengths. <laughs> yeah, so I took it in the corporate world and um, it was totally different. Like this was when I was at Hasbro. And then I'm like, I'm gonna, now that I run my own business, you know, I am I am my own boss. Like I'm gonna retake this test. Mm. And I did get different results. And um, four out of the five of my top, strengths fall in the influence bucket mm. <laughs> I think I'm, I might be three no I think I'm four I'm like a heavy influencer but heavy I don't feel influence. like I'm... So I'm like all right you know and and part of me I you know I, I did kind of like push away in the beginning I was like oh I don't want to be like in influence yeah when you think of and, influencer yeah it's a little bit different. the Clifton strengths I mean, influencer is not like and then but I did I read I don't have it in front of me but it was um it was Shoot, the name is slipping me. It's by Brennan Burchard, and it's about like um, crafting healthy habits. And anyway, one of them was influence. Like it's like a healthy habit. And so I leaned into influence. I'm like, this is my strength. This is my gift. And you know, and I and I come from a very authentic way. And it's basically it is like you are selling, but it's um, it's like you're selling to a best friend. It's like you're just explaining why you love the product or yeah. why you love the so much and it's not and and I don't sell anything like shake mix or teeth whitening or anything yeah. that doesn't align with my brand or if right. I don't don't feel 100% passionate about it like if it was like you know a friend was like oh I just want you to affiliate for my course and I've never taken it and I'm like how can I really like share my story and like affiliate for you if um if I had known nothing about it you know you know what right. I mean so it's something like I'm I 100% support and can endorse. And like, these are products that like, I love, like the stuff I do for Adobe. I mean, it's for Adobe express and I use it um, a lot. Like it's, it goes hand in hand with my design. And so it's, it's just an easy sell. It's like not forced at all. And so um, I would say like Adobe is probably like my biggest partner. And that's led to like other opportunities too. Like I've just done some like in-house design for them. And I designed um their anniversary pins for adobe max yeah, i saw that, really that was fun so project. Cool. And so it was just this like great like relationship building and um and I, I still work with them on a regular basis so um so yeah I, I i try to tell people that like 
I'm an art influencer. I am a content creator. I'm oh, not, yeah. I'm not your typical like influencer. Like yeah, I, yeah, of course not. I, yeah. And even like, and it, it translates into multiple things. Like even in the art licensing world, for example, like with Casetify, like I take photos of my own art and then they, they run ads on that. And so, um, so it's like this, this partnership. So it's like, they're obviously going to sell their product, but it has my art on it. So it's like this, this yeah, perfect. Mutually beneficial yeah, mutually beneficial for sure. I love that. So yeah, because, okay. I feel like I have more questions on that now, but like, like for example, for Casetify, like you're licensing your work with them basically, or you, you have your art. I mean, it's Casetify is to be just so I'm clear it's it's basically it's sort of print on demand but like you have to get approved like it's not like you can just yeah, upload and whatever they, so they choose like, who they want to work with yeah yeah but then they, they, they print it based like on whole, who purchases it right right they have like a whole artist um series or whatever that they're, they're yeah. collaborators so they choose like specific artists and then they release like a collection with right with okay and so so like you're kind of you're not kind of you are licensing your work to them but then do you get extra because you're you're like marketing it for them or is that just you take pictures because you are excited about the product and then they love that you have a big following and that they're beautiful pictures and beautiful art and so then they use that for their ads so it is for them like it is um part of that that partnership bundle so it was like kind of required so like once you know, I uploaded all my designs, then it was like, they'll send samples and then I have to take photos and send those photos to them. So it's all part of like their contract. Gotcha. I have worked with um, other, other companies where it was an addition. So it was like almost like an upsell. So it was like, I, um, you know, I can do this art for you or whatever. And it's like, I also, in addition, have this um, following, a large following on Instagram. I create this process reels for an additional fee. I can show you a behind the scenes of how I created the art. And then, mm. um, and if you want to run it as a whitelisted ad, you can, <laughs> you pay me extra for that. So there, it's kind of like the offering package tiers I so that they can, if they just want the art, you know, that's like base level and then mid tier level is like behind the scenes, real, that kind of thing. Third tier is like more like usage rights and like um, running it as an ad and and that sort of thing. Wow. All right. I like <laughs> that. I kind. I mean, I I know that that sort of exists. I mean, mm -hmm. in our industry, like obviously, the, I don't know things happen in other industries too. But like, I I knew that that's you know obviously if you have a platform, then that can be worked into your sort of licensing agreements. But little old me does not have said platform, so. <laughs> People know me, but like, man, I will tell you, I've been on Instagram forever and I'm made net. I'm like, is this going to be the year that I hit 10,000? Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> but um, I, I hear you. it's frustrating because, and it's like Instagram goes through all these, like, yeah. these waves. Yeah, of the algorithm. So like for a while, they when Reels was new, I leaned 100% to Reels. I was like, any kind of new feature they drop, I'm going to be like an early adapter because they're going to push that content that um, supports their their new feature. Cool. So I was like, I'm going to figure out Reels and I'm going to like, and so I taught myself how to create Reels and I definitely got better. Like if you scroll way back, mm -hmm. it was basically just like a time lapse of me drawing, which is fine. But then now it's almost like a mini commercial where it's like, I do like a zoomed in shot and then overhead and then yeah, like, no, your reels are amazing. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I, uh, <laughs> you know, I sometimes do that. I, I have, I have like, I use all different things to do them. So like, sometimes they're sort of well put together. Sometimes they're no matter what it's one time I tried to do it like straight up on Instagram of like the zoom in of like the flat art into the pro oh. and then zoom out to the product. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> So yeah, that's no, okay. I'm not an art influencer. I'm not too. an art influencer. It's okay. I will. It'll be all right. <laughs> it took a lot of research and like practice and just like showing up. Like you know, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna post this reel. I don't care if it gets like if it goes viral. Like I'm just gonna sh share my work and share my art and my process at the end of the day. <laughs> all right. Well, let's uh dive into our bonus question I love a good bonus question <laughs> I'm happy to have you here and be able to ask you and for those who are interested in the answer to this bonus question um my 
information below to sign up for my newsletter. You can then get into my toolkit and that will have Jess's answer. Um, and so the bonus question for today is, uh, basically how long did it take you to make a full-time living as an illustrator? Um, and can you share what, you know, your first few years income looked like to give new artists an idea of, of what's possible? Head to the link below to sign up for my toolkit and hear Jess's answer to this question. She talks about how long it took her and breaks down the actual numbers of her first few years of working independently. So I am so grateful for you to, uh, coming on and uh, sharing your experiences and, you know, what you've kind of learned along the way and, you know, where you came from and all that stuff. And I will definitely have your links below. If you guys aren't following Jess, I don't know why, because she has <laughs> such fun work. I love seeing her pop up in my feed, uh, but also great, you know, like information um, and Awesome, awesome challenges, right? If you want a challenge, she grew her, you know, Instagram following through challenges amongst other things. And so definitely um, check out the links below for all that information. Thanks, Jess. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thanks so much for having me, Elizabeth. <laughs> In the description of all my YouTube videos, I have a link to elizabethsilver.com slash fresh, which will take you to sign up for my Surface Pattern Boss Toolkit. Once you sign up, you'll get an email to confirm, and then you'll get the password to get into this toolkit where you can find all kinds of resources, surface pattern, job guide, business advice, all kinds of trend reports, plus bonus videos and access to the archives for my newsletters where I have all kinds of cool links and useful creative business advice that you can check out. So I hope you go down to the link and join me. I'd love to have you. And while you're at it, hit subscribe and check out more videos on my channel.